Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel and thanks for logging on. If you enjoy these videos, do me a favor and subscribe to our YouTube channel right here at Watchbox Reviews. I would really appreciate it and I promise to update daily. If you like this watch, you can see it and purchase it on our website, thewatchbox.com. And today we are discussing the Parmigiani Tonda Centrum Contiem Perpetuel Retrograd, a timepiece that is a fusion of Parmigiani's design ethic with its engineering capability. It's offbeat, it's funky, it's fun, it's everything a luxury watch should be, and coming from an independent manufacturer that is financed by a pharmaceutical empire, it's also rock solid in engineering and after sales support. So this is one of the best total packages you're going to find. Parmigiani operates a little bit like a Portuguese man of war. It's an organism comprised of distinct and independent separate organisms. They own separate factories that make almost every part of a Parmigiani watch, and we'll take a tour of them as we work our way through this Centrum Contiem Perpetuel. You can see it is a large perpetual calendar. As dress watches go, 42 millimeters is on the large side. It's not exceptionally thick, although it's substantial at 11.5 millimeters. It's more broad. The mass is spread out, and you can see lug to lug, it's a commanding 49 millimeters, but it's a handsome and ergonomically appropriate alternative case form that makes this an easy wear on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. Michel Parmigiani, more than anyone else, has continued the work of Mark Newson in the wristwatch space, not in form, but effectively in philosophy, taking biomorphic designs and forms and translating them into the wristwatch. But whereas Mark Newson was primarily interested in appearance, Michel Parmigiani is interested in fit, form, and ergonomics, the fusion of the man and machine. And you have that here, as it's a big watch, but the teardrop lugs bend around my wrist. It does have a broad footing. 25 millimeters is the width of this custom Hermes strap, as along with the Sandoz family foundation, the pharmaceutical empire I mentioned, Hermes is a stakeholder in the Parmigiani companies. You'll note that it is a thick cut and substantial, large, Rectangular scale alligator leather, semi-gloss, brown and dark brown at that, with a monotone stitch, a folded profile that shows you the layers of construction, and a wonderfully buttery calfskin on the underside. This is signature Hermes right there. You will note that those lugs are quite distinct from the case form. They're designed to arc around the wrist, so though this is a 49 millimeter lug-to-lug -lug watch, I wouldn't give up on wearing it on a wrist as small as 14 centimeters in circumference. Ergonomics are that good. The case is simple. All of high polish, it's one strong character line, is formed by the junction between bezel and case band. The timepiece does feature a generously knurled crown that's an absolute pleasure to turn and easy to grip. Even this is not a default component, being self-consciously designed to work well and look distinctive. Jumping back to the dial, it is highly layered. We're going to get a little bit closer now, afford ourselves some more light, focus in and get a better gauge of the details of this watch. So you can see my light bulbs have finally been replaced. I have a lot more light in the light box now, and you can take advantage of that fact to appreciate the layers of this dial. There's a stepped track outboard that has the first set of hour indices, and it also contains the retrograde scale for the retrograding date. You can see the blued lunette indicator that spans 1 to 31 and then jumps back. A few small touches of blue for the even dates of the month, and then center a second set of applied rose gold hour indices. The hands at center are what Parmigiani calls delta style. It's a fusion of alpha and dauphine, and beautifully rendered in rose gold and heavily loomed. There will be a loom shot for this watch. It's the unconventional use of Cote de Genève in vertical striations, a feature more commonly seen on the movements of watches that gives this dial its character. It's the depth and it's the texture. The Apertures for the perpetual calendar make for easy reading. You can see the day, you can see the month, the leap year phase, and then northern and southern hemisphere moon phases. The moons are a very dark blue. Easy to read, although some of the references we often use to gauge the top and bottom of a dial are confused here, which can be disorienting, especially since the apertures are placed below the junction of the hands, a break with almost every other aperture calendar design going. Turn it all over and Still more breaks with convention. This is all Parmigiani back here. Adjusted in a chronometer-like five positions, it's a Valche base, 
and Parmigiani, of course, owns Vauche, so this is an in-house movement. Caliber 333, 55 hour power reserve, twin mainspring barrels in series to give it that long power reserve, but also a very even torque release from maximum wind to minimum wind, so it is a good timekeeper. A rose lathe cut gold winding mess, and you'll note underneath that, let's turn everything over, a balance with a micrometric adjustment device, much like a Triovis, and you can see the balance itself like everything else in the watch made by the Parmigiani companies, beating away at 28,800 vibrations per hour. The watch is nicely decorated, and though I perhaps can't capture the most exquisite details as I don't have a loop cam, you will note all of the screw heads are black polished, and I'll give you a hint. If you could get close to this one with a loop, you'd start to see the edges of the bridges lighting up. I expected flat, sharp bevels, like you typically find on Audemars Piguet, Chachère Le Coul, Zenith, Gerard Perigot products in this price point. The price point for this new was about $66,500. Instead, what I found is the same kind of mirrored anglage, black polish, and tension to detail at the micro level that I'm used to seeing from the likes of Blancpain, the upscale Audemars Piguet models, and Vacheron Constantin. So you have rock-solid running gear with the perpetual calendar, the 55-hour automatic movement, and then the finish befitting a top-level complication like a perpetual calendar. An ergonomic miracle and an engineering feat to match, you can see this Parmigiani Centrum Contiem Perpetuel Retrograde on the watch box. And we're back with the Parmigiani Tanda Centrum Contiem Perpetuel. As you can see, all the stations of the hours loomed, but the hands at center unmistakable, robustly luminescent. This one's water resistant to 30 meters, and another feature I should have mentioned during the lit portion, it does feature hacking or stop seconds. See it and make it yours on the watch box.